Parshas Vayichi, in this week's Parsha, Yaakov blesses his sons. But he not only blesses his sons, first he blesses two of his grandsons, and that's Ephraim and Manasseh. Let's read the verses inside and then try to figure out why this information is where it is and what else we might learn from it. So we're talking about Perak Memches, and this is Pasuk Hei. That's 48.5. And now, your two boys who were born to you in the land of Egypt. Until I came, meaning before I came to Egypt. They're mine. Ephraim and Manasseh will be to me like Reuven and Shimon. Reuven and Shimon were uh, Yaakov's first two sons. So now we have Yosef's two sons will be like Ephraim, will be like Yaakov's two sons. How's that? Um, and why specifically? Um, uh, Moshe Usher Olovich asked, asked me a question this, this week in Shul. Why specifically uh, Ruvain and Shimon? Then you have another question, which is that there seems to be extraneous information, accurate information, but it's, it doesn't seem to be pertinent here, which is um, Yaakov says your two boys who were born in Egypt, and then he further qualifies by saying, Ad bo'i elacham mitzrayim until be, before I join you in Egypt. Why is that important? Why is it important to point out that they were born before Yaakov got there? Uh, next, we have this question of um, Yaakov switching his hands in order to make sure that his right hand goes on Ephraim and his left hand goes on Manasseh. And one would have thought, and Yosef thought, that it should have been reversed because Manasseh was the bechor. Manasseh was the firstborn, so he gets the right hand. It's a convention. So let's talk about how brachos work, first of all. I don't really know how brachos work. What I do know, however, is it's evident from the verses that brachos aren't just some kind of magic that create whatever new reality uh, you want, but they build. They build on what's there. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any difference who Ephraim and Rasha were. That uh, Ephraim is going to be, he may be the younger, but he's going to be bigger, and Manasseh will also be blessed which is all of what uh, Yaakov says. But what difference does it make? And this goes back to before. This goes back to when Yitzhak is blessing uh, Yaakov and Esau. And there's this whole big deal about um, this one's supposed to get the bracha. No, that one's supposed to get the bracha. Well, again, if the bracha is all-powerful and can create a new reality, then what difference does it make who you give it to? You give it to somebody and say, poof, you're Superman. It doesn't make a difference if he was capable of leaping tall buildings with a single bound. Uh, before he got the blessing, if the blessing is uh, powerful in that way, then it can make him anything you want him to. So obviously, the, the blessing develops something that's already there. So what's already there? So we have a little hint to it when uh, Yaakov talks about uh, Ad Bo'i Elecha Mitzrayim, until these, these children were born before I came to Egypt. Why is that important? Well, uh, everybody else was raised by Yaakov. And Yaakov had reason to believe, and it's confirmed later when, when he gives them the brachos, but he had reason to believe that those who are under his sphere of influence would act in a certain way, would conduct themselves in a certain way, would transmit the misora, the tradition, in a certain way. But Ephraim and Manasseh were born and developed uh, to at least a certain extent before Yaakov was even in the picture. They, they grew independently of Yaakov. As a matter of fact, Yaakov Kamenetsky points out that from the names that Yosef gives, we can see something about either the, the tehunos, the character, the predilections of uh, the boys, or at least Yosef's disposition about them. He says, it, it says, um, this is now in uh, Perak Mem Aleph, Pasuk Nun Aleph, that's 50, 4151. Uh, going back to Parshas Miketz, it says, Vayikra Yosef Hashem HaBchor Menashe. So Yosef called the name of the oldest, Manasseh, which we know is is reflected here with his uh, confusion, with Yosef's confusion that his father would um, give the first, presumably the uh, Bechors, the firstborns, Bracha, he gives it to the secondborn. So why does he name Manasseh, Manasseh? Ki nishani elokim es kol amaliv es kol beisavi. Because God has allowed me to forget all of my travail and my father's house. So he's still dealing, in, in Yosef still has his father's house has Yaakov's house in his mind when he's naming uh, Manasseh. How about Ephraim? The name 
the second he called Ephraim, Kifrani Elokim Beretzoni, because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. So we're no longer referring to Yaakov. Now it's Mitzrayim, and now it's I've met success in this land that is a land that had been a land of trouble for me. So there's a connection already between Manasseh, embedded in his name or reflected in his name, with a consciousness of uh, the Zaidi, the Zaidi's house, Yaakov's house. Um, and we know, for example, that Manasseh is the, according to Chazal, he is the translator. So he knows Lashon Kodesh, he knows Hebrew, not just Egyptian. Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky suggests that, the, that when the, uh, the Gemara and the Midrashim say that Yaakov used to learn with Ephraim and ultimately developed an appreciation for Ephraim, perhaps more than that of Manasseh, that Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky suggests that it's because Ephraim needed it more. Ephraim needed the connection with Yaakov because he was already born after Yosef becomes settled and comfortable in Egypt, in contrast to Manasseh, whose name reflects a um, getting used to not being with father, not reflecting success in the land. Now, as a result of Ephraim's learning with Yaakov, and maybe this gets into the nature-nurture issue, but certainly Ephraim ends up being the uh, reflective of the striving for Torah. And Manasseh is reflective of uh, material success. And uh, Chazal talk about this uh, almost like what would have been had Esau stepped up to the plate, what would have been um, Yaakov ish tam yoshev alim and uh, Esau and ish yodei atzayid, that Yaakov would have been the, the inside guy, the person who, who holds on to the Mesorah, who learns the Torah, who masters the tradition, keeps it rock solid, and Esau was to have been the outside guy. That plan didn't work, but now we have Ephraim and Manasseh, which according to Rav Shimon Schwab, that, those were their roles. Um, Ephraim is the uh, Baal Mesora, he's the inside guy, and uh, Manasseh is the doer. Now, what about this uh, switching hands? It says that, uh, that rather than rearranging the boys, uh, Yaakov switches hands. So Rav Schwab suggests that the switching the hands is really more of a of a converging of the hands, although the hands themselves ended up on the heads of their respective children, but the arms were crossed over. And this may reflect um, a unity, a, a goal of a unity of Torah and Gedula, Torah, Gedula, but Malcolm Echad. And this may be why there seems to be something of a grammatical anomaly when Yaakov is talking about how people will bless their children when, by referring to Ephraim and Menashe. The verse in Memches Chav 4820 says, Vayavorachem, and he blessed them. Vayom Hahu, on that day, Lemor saying, Becha in you, singular, Yivorech Yisrael Lemor. Will the Jews, or will Israel say as, as follows, or will, will bless as follows? And Rashi says the parents will rest their children by saying, Yesimcha Elohim, may God make you singular, Kephraim and Manasseh. Like Ephraim and Manasseh. So we've got we've got the plural by Yvarchim, he blessed them, but he said Bacha uh, in you, singular, and then it's you, you you bless a single child and you say that child will be like Ephraim and Manasseh. Well which one will he be? And the answer is he'll be both. That's the bracha, at least. The bracha is Torah ugedula v'malkam echad, that, that, that our children, our aspiration is not to split the Torah, put it on one side and, and split accomplishments and put it on the other, as is reflected in the persona of Ephraim in contrast to the persona of Manasseh, but rather in one person who should have a dedication and devotion to Torah and an ability to accomplish in this world as well. And uh, Rosh Trump suggests, even though there are those who say that Vayivarchem, he blessed them, and then says, Becha Yivarech, may be a reference to Yosef, that people will bless their children by saying that they'll be like Yosef, but they say like Ephraim and Manasseh, because Yosef actually had, he was uh, a man of great spirit and a man, an Ishmat Sliak, who was a very successful uh, individual. And Rav Schwab observes that those two attributes uh, appear to have been distilled separately in his sons, and now Yaakov is bringing them together. Why, like... Ruvain and Shimon, well, Ruvain and Shimon are cutting a new path as the leaders, as the firstborns of the tribes of Yaakov, the Shifteka, the, the, the tribes of God. 
And in a sense, we're now in the next stage of development, which is that we have to assure that even when we are in foreign lands, even when we are Be'eretz Ani, even when we are in the uh, lands that are not always hospitable to the development of Yiddish kind of Judaism, but nevertheless, um, there is an adaptation to the uh, exile, to the Gullus, and uh, this is similar to um, a shot I heard, I believe, from my Rebbe Ravar and Salvechik about why um, uh, Yaakov went to learn at Yeshiva Shem Ve'ever before going to uh, find a wife to go to base love in the house of love and why he had to be prepared. He had learned with Avram, says says the uh, uh, Chazal. But his he had to be prepared to deal in adverse circumstances in the house of love. And similarly, Ephraim and Menashe are the reflections of the continuation of the Masorah, the continuation of the of the of the tradition in uh, at least outside of the best conditions and perhaps in inhospitable conditions, but nevertheless, they represent both accomplishment in Torah and accomplishment in achieving in the material world, but always the right hand, the preferred hand, is on the hand of Ephraim, which represents the Torah. Have a good Shabbos.